I came in this country in 1968, working for Fairchild Semiconductor, the famous company that actually gave the name Silicon Valley to Santa Clara Valley. And then I worked for Intel. And then I started a number of companies on my own. And right now, I am a uh, president of the Federico and Nadia Fagin Foundation for the Scientific Study of Consciousness. Well, I was born in Italy and uh, I was also educated in Italy. My first uh, experience, formative experience, was actually seeing a model airplane fly. And uh, I was so excited that a toy could fly instead of a real plane that I decided to build my own. And, uh, but I didn't have any money, so I couldn't buy the, the kits. I had to figure out how to design uh, and build one myself. And that experience was really extremely formative because by the time I was 12, I had gone through the entire inventive process where you imagine a product, uh, you then draw it, and then you create plans, then you decide what materials you need, you go buy the material, then you build the model, and then you test it, and you enjoy the result. So that experience was much more than play, and it led me to go to a technical high school where I learned electronics, and uh, with that experience, I got interested in uh, transistors and computers. I'm talking about the late 50s, time when uh, those inventions were early, in their early development. And uh, I ended up working for uh, Olivetti uh, in their R&D laboratory where they were developing uh, electronic computers. Because of a series of fortunate uh, events, I ended up co-designing uh, about 60% of uh, a, an experimental computer when I was 19 in building that computer and have it, having it work with the help of four technicians. So that experience then led me to uh, go to university. I wanted to understand much better solid state physics and how transistors worked and I perceive the future of electronics. When, uh, with my passion for model planes, uh, I wanted to uh, study uh, aeronautical engineering and uh, this technical high school is a five-year high school compared to the four year that you have here, uh, taught uh, aeronautical engineering. So I went to that school. Unfortunately, the aeronautical engineering program uh, was going to be suspended the next year, and so I couldn't, I couldn't do that. I ended up studying radio technics and uh, telecommunication, and, uh, and that brought me to the, uh, to the interest in computers and transistors, which I mentioned earlier, that allowed uh, uh, me to later work in the industry and uh, work on one of the early transistorized computers. My first uh, project at Fertile Semiconductor was the development of the silicon gate technology. The MOS silicon gate technology was the first technology that was self-aligned where the gate was uh, um, able to uh, control the device without too many parasitics and that produced a technology that was five times faster, uh, twice as dense, and uh, completely reliable compared to the incumbent technology, which was metal, metal gate technology. And that technology was eventually adopted in the entire world industry. Uh, and for 40 years, it was the core way in which uh, MOS transistors were made. So, that was the break, and that led me to then work for Intel uh, Corporation. I, I think that the crowning achievement for me was the design of the first microprocessor because uh, no such thing had been done before, and that required the very 
intimate understanding of the process technology, of the circuit design, the logic design, the uh, how computers worked, and of course all the process of uh, bringing such a product to, uh, to production. The career that I had as an entrepreneur that started with my first company called Zilog. It was the first company uh, in the world that was entirely dedicated to microprocessor. I started that company with a colleague, uh, Ralph Angerman, in uh, uh, 1974. And uh, that company developed the Z80, which was my idea. And the Z80 is a, one of the most successful microprocessors ever produced. In fact, it is today, 2017, still in volume production. In spite of uh, those uh, achievements in various aspects of my career, I continued to maintain an interest in model planes. Uh, occasionally, I even design and build from scratch some of them. Uh, most of the time, I buy kits. Today, of course, they are radio control and uh, they have uh, powerful electric engines that uh, put out uh, even several uh, horsepower of, of power. And, uh, and they even have uh, uh, autopilot. So uh, they are toys that are more than toys. If there was one word to describe my life, uh, all the accomplishments and both the personal and outer life, I would say that transformative is the, is the adjective that I would use because um, I feel like I had four lives. The first one was, of course, the growing up and early educational and early experiences in Italy, then the technical and managerial um, life and inventor life that I had at Fairchild at Intel, and then the um, entrepreneurial life where I created several companies, successful companies. And finally, the life where, the fourth life, where our, I'm facing my own inner life and uh, where I'm spending tremendous amount uh, doing that. So in all these phases, I have changed myself in a very foundational way. And so transformation is really the right word. This is a uh, painting that my father did uh, uh, when he was here many years ago and uh, is depicting uh, the convergence of all forms uh, toward some sort of uh, uh, mind and it has the phrase tout ce qui monde converge which is a phrase that Taylor de Chardin uh, coined uh, in the 40s and, or 50s, and it basically means that everything that goes up converges, is the idea that there is some kind of purpose in the universe. So it's a, it's a very uh, apropos because at the time when my father did this, I was not particularly interested in the study of consciousness, but now uh, that I'm doing this, it looks a little prophetic that my father actually came up with this idea. <laughs> Well, my legacy is really to my family, uh, and my wife in particular, that uh, has supported me because uh, I work hard, very hard, um, pretty much all my life. <clears throat> and that meant um, long hours, um, being absent from the family. And uh, she picked up this lab, particularly when uh, uh, Intel tried to disown me of uh, both the uh, silicon gate technology and the microprocessor when I started my own company that competed with them. And so she went to battle with them and, uh, and she was, uh, was able to undo much of the damage that was done by the PR of Intel. But she had to fight, fight for me and uh, that was an incredible feat that also made her grow tremendously. So in some ways, that fight she had to do had a silver lining to it because uh, she became a better person. And my children, of course, uh, are the ones that will survive us and uh, the ones that uh, hopefully will have a wonderful memory of us. I think that everybody 
ought to follow what they feel like doing in life, independent of what uh, other people say or the circumstances. Obviously, one can have to have common sense, but, but at the same time, uh, one ought to dream and one ought to follow his dreams. I would like to be remembered as a person that follows his, his uh, inclinations, that, was, uh, that wanted to understand life wanted to understand uh, the nature of reality uh, in a deeper way than uh, you know what you get by going to school and so taking it upon myself to explore particularly the nature of consciousness which is uh, a incredibly complex subject that is uh, understudied and underappreciated today to the point that people think that they can create a conscious robot which is a complete nonsense. Uh, so I, uh, you know, I want to be, I would like to be remembered as somebody that was uh, true to himself and that fought for whatever he believed and that put his time and energy on the line and uh, accomplished quite a bit. Mm -hmm.